Yo guys, Jake Pierre Tech here and today I'm talking to you about the Fujifilm X-H1. I'm going to talk to you about one of the reasons why I actually purchased this camera and throughout this whole video I am recording with it and the 23mm f2 lens wide open so you could get a feel of what it's like in a control semi control environment. I don't have professional lighting or nothing, just a window behind the camera and my setup behind me. That's pretty much it. What I can control in the camera, I am shooting everything in manual. Shutter speed, the aperture and the ISO and the white balance is manually adjusted. And I'm also shooting in each other now. Oh yeah, and of course 4K 24p at 100 megabytes per second. So guys, what do you think? Is the image good enough for YouTube in 2021? I believe so. And uh, today I wanna talk to you about some of the reasons why this camera possibly got off on the wrong foot and is still having a rough time trying to be relevant in the mirrorless world. After much thinking, I came to the conclusion that possibly these three reasons that I'm gonna share with you are the reason why the X-H1 got off on the wrong foot, got a bad rep. Our reason number one is timing. The timing that this camera came out was just couldn't be worse. You know, um, it's kind of related with the second point, but Sony was on fire. They just really the A7 Mark III, A7 III that really took the market by storm. It's an amazing, possibly still one of the best hybrids out there ever made. So I believe the X-H1, if it would have came out before the A7 III and would have distanced itself from the xt 3s release date, things would have been a lot better for the X-H1. But unfortunately, that was not the case. Fujifilm just didn't read the air there. I don't know what happened. It was just bad timing. And the second reason why I believe the X-H1 had a rough start is because of the competition. As I said before, Sony was on fire. They had amazing APS-C cameras and also the full frame cameras were on fire. I just believe Sony did an amazing job. Their marketing team, their whole dedication to mirrorless was fantastic. And that affected a lot of companies Rest in peace, Olympus, <clears throat> Nikon. Other cameras were actually affected. You know, you got Pentax that barely got into mirrorless, but they just stopped quickly. Um, Olympus threw in the white towel and Nikon, they didn't throw in the white towel yet, but they are bleeding bad and they're trying to come up with these Z5 and Z50 to try to stop the bleeding a little bit but the damage is done. But Sony, amazing, they got great, great value for the money if you have the money. But really, it was Sony's fault. I gotta give the second fault to the competition, AKA Sony. And the number three reason why I think X-H1 has a bad rep its younger cousin, the X-T3. When it was announced, the juicy, drooling, jaw-drooling video specs that that camera had when it came out late 2018, I mean, we're talking about 4K 10-bit. And you know, with the X-T3 flexing its muscles with the 4K in 60 smooth FPS, you know, you could actually slow that down into 24P and oh, you get some nice slow-mo in 4K. Ooh, that was tempting. I was tempted to go get a X-T3 because it was that much better in specs over the X-H1. So why will Fujifilm announce their video-centric X-H1 and later on tease us with an even better video spec camera, but it's supposed to be for the photographers? and it took away all the thunder of the X-H1. I mean, they try to fool us with the names, you know, the model names, X-H series, and you got the X-T series. Fuji, you ain't fooling nobody. You knew your timing was off the X-H1, you panicked, and you pushed out the X-T3. Here 
here we are in 2021 and the X-T4 is out. It's even better than the X-T3. So why consider the X-H1 in 2021? Well, the simple fact is that there are also three great pros on why you should consider the X-H1 over any other Fuji body. Now my first case is, and most importantly, that is cheap. Yeah, you could get a mint condition, almost new body of the X-H1 for less than a thousand dollars. Now in my case, it was in pretty mint condition. I don't know why it was so cheap. I got it off a retailer store in Japan. It's called Kamera no Kitamura. Yeah, that's the one. And uh, I found it in my local store. They had two bodies selling for like 600. Well, actually it's like Rokuman Yonsen, equivalent to almost, at that time it was a little over $600. <laughs> Which if you ask me, it's like, what? A $600 camera, mirrorless camera with IBIS, 4K at 200 megabytes per second. Oh, you know I'm jumping in that bandwagon. And at that time, I was really considering the X-H1 over the X-T3. X-H1, X-T3, IBIS, 10 bit, IBIS, 4K 60, IBIS. As you could tell, the second reason why you should consider getting the X-H1 is because of the IBIS. Most of all the bodies in Fujifilm, aside from the X-H1, X-S10, and the X-T4, don't have IBIS. Oh yeah, the professional one, the GF series camera. Well, that's another, it's another world. That's another realm over there. I'll never touch that realm on the medium format cameras. Those are the only three bodies that have IBIS. So that's the second thing I was looking for. Thing about IBIS that I, I didn't think about this before. Looking at my footage in my computer, you would not believe how much data, how many gigs were lost and actual needed shots were lost due to shaky footage. So IBIS is really handy. I actually haven't used my gimbal since I got this camera. All my shots that you have seen in YouTube with the Fujifilm X-H1, all handheld. It's that good actually. And I did consider Sony. I looked at the Sony A7S Mark II, uh, and of course I'm looking at used bodies. So keep that in mind that I'm looking for best bang for the buck I could get in 2020, or well, the end of 2020, beginning of 2021. And at that time, the best sale that I could find is the X-H1 for $600. I sold a few of my Sony lenses that I have, covered the cost for the body and even more. I had a surplus, so at that moment, I just decided to go on and get a couple of lenses. So they, I got a couple of used mint lenses. So the one I'm shooting on right now, the 23mm F2 lens, as well as the great magical kit lens, that is the 18 to 55 F2.8 to F4. That lens is on another world. It blew my mind. When I put that lens on the camera, I was like, what? This is a kit? This is not a kit lens. And that's the first thing that jumped into my mind. It still shoots great 4K. It does have slow motion options. We got face detect, eye detect for stills. For video, the autofocus is still good. If you stay in the center of the frame like I am right now, it won't hunt that much and uh, it just works great. And recently the third party support has been growing. We got build trucks, per gear, seven artisans and the TT artisans. You know, you got all these third party companies making great glass for the XF system. Basically, those are the reasons why I would recommend the X-H1 even in 2021. You know, you got the price that you could get for it, the IBIS, the 4K, and last but not least, I actually forgot a bonus reason why I actually ended up with the X-H1 and it was, it was a big deal for me personally. That is the grip. Yes, the body design. I know it's kind of like a large full frame mirrorless camera body size, but I love that. I'm coming from the A7S. It's a full frame mirrorless camera. 
and it found that camera to be exhausting when you pairing it with large lenses. And I know the same thing will happen with any other system that I get regardless of the body. If you pair a mirrorless camera with a large lens, it's gonna get front heavy, it's gonna be really tiring on your fingers. So therefore, I needed a body with a nice grip. So at the time when I purchased this camera, actually the XS10 didn't come out yet at that time. So it was between X-H1 and the X-C3. And I did test the X-C3 quite a bit on in Kitamura. And I just found that like, it's kind of tiring. You know, at the front of my fingers holding that camera, it's pretty hefty. That camera with the 16 to 80 F4 lens by Fuji, Fujinon, it's too heavy. So it's just, you know, I, I keep talking about the X-H1. You notice like little things start coming up why this was such a great purchase. You know, you got the buttons, the dials on the front. I love the manual switch rocker in front of the camera. I use that all the time. It has great colors, great film simulation, and good and respectable specs for 2021. But the battery life shortcoming that this camera does have. So I did end up purchasing a battery grip. This body can last for a full day of shooting. And that reminds me another actual con that the Sony battery grip has. When you use the battery grip on the Sony bodies, you actually have to remove the internal battery in the camera and then the grip has like a dummy battery. Basically, that's what it is. And then you just have two batteries. With this camera, I could leave the battery in there, add the grip and with the connector pins outside under the body, you could actually charge the battery inside the camera, power the whole thing using the grip and you add more features. For example, you could shoot up to 30 minutes with in 4K. You have the performance mode, which actually increases the frames per second you could shoot at. You get earphones, so uh, earphone jack. So you could actually monitor the audio coming from the camera that you're recording in the camera. So it's just a very well thought out grip. The buttons are amazing. They feel just like the camera. So you see, Fujifilm did a lot of things right, guys, with the X-H1. So if you're in the market, you're considering upgrading your APS-C body, or if you're like me, I'm actually coming from full frame, and just looking for a better body, uh, good colors, great specs, and still have IBIS, then this is a great consideration that you could think about in your shopping. So. I would recommend take a look at the X-H1 and see if you can find one for cheap. You won't regret it. You're gonna get Fuji colors. You're gonna get sharp images. Just an awesome buy. I haven't looked back. Guys, if you found this video helpful at all, hit a thumbs up, uh, share, and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.